Hey everybody, Nick Marzok with Full Compass. I'm so excited about this interview today. I'm sitting down with Elias Tufexis. Especially if you're a gamer, you really know his voice. He has been in so many video game franchises, like the big ones. Like anything I can think of. He was in the Call of Duties, Assassin's Creeds. He was in Fortnite. He is Sam Coe in the new Starfield game. He was Adam Jensen in Deus Ex. Like he has such an illustrious voiceover career, especially when it comes to video games. And he's also a really talented on-camera actor. He was in The Expanse, and now he's in the new Star Trek series, Star Trek Discovery. A really distinctive voice, so I'm sure he has a lot to say about finding the gear that pairs with that, how to use it, his approach to auditions, his approach to recording, um, and maybe even the future of voiceover as we go further into AI, what this world is going to look like. So all of that and more with Elias Tefexis here at Full Compass. Elias Tufexis, Fortnite, Deus Ex, Call of Duty. Like, I could just, like, off my head, Assassin's Creed, you're a part of all of them. <laughs> yeah, I've been, it's, it's funny because I kind of fell ass backwards into it, too. It's not something I actively sought out. It's just when you're an actor, you just take auditions for whatever. And yeah. It just happened to be that, like, oh, okay, he's good at this type of thing or he's good at this type of thing. And I ended up getting, you know, all this back-to-back -back kind of video game work. And then one game would lead to another game, would lead to another game. And then yeah. the whole time I'm like, no, 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 I'm a mostly a TV actor. <laughs> but you, know, like you start embracing it eventually. You start going, yeah. well, actually, these scripts are not bad. Yeah. A lot of these are better than TV. Yeah. And, uh, and you start really falling into it. Now I'm like, you know, now I'm like, if a game is being made and I'm not in it, yeah. why am I not part of this? <laughs> yeah. You have a voice that can be a protagonist, but it's also a really good antagonist yeah, voice. I do a lot of bad guys. See, that's the thing. I play a lot of bad guys on TV. Yeah. But in video games, they all want to sound like like a cool antagonist, a protagonist. So yeah. I end up playing all, all the good guys that I play are in games, and all the bad guys I play are on TV. <laughs> Don't know why; it's just the way it is. How has your gear evolved? From was there like and and you know specifically the the TLM one hundred three? Yeah, you arrive at that because it has. But what was what 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 kind oh, yeah. of yeah? What, I had this for a long time. Yeah, SM seven B. Yep. Uh, and they're good for, they're great for podcasts. Yep. Uh, they're not that great, at least with my voice. It mm -hmm. never really captured what I needed for my voice. What um, are you looking for? I want to drill into that because you do have the depth, you have the low, yeah. that great. It's making depth. sure it captures, for, for me particularly, it's mm -hmm. making sure it captures the, the layers of, mm -hmm. of my voice. Cause I have this, like there's a show that I do on Netflix called Blood of Zeus. Mm -hmm. And, uh. They told me they cast me that uh, in that lead bad guy mm -hmm. because he was a human and became a demon, mm -hmm. and there was something about the way my voice sounded where it's as human but demon at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that's what I mean, right? You, yeah. you don't ever know why you get a role. Yeah. And so let's go back to your studio setup. Um, so you have the TLM 103 into what's your interface? I just use a um, Apollo. Yep. UA Apollo. Yeah. And then that goes just into my Mac. Nice. I just. Plug, plug it into my Mac, and then mm -hmm. I use Twisted Wave yeah. on my Mac. Free software, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's free, but if you want to use it properly, I think it's like 30 bucks or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah. nothing major. Because mm -hmm. uh, the, the free one has like restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, and it's totally, there's a lot of games out there that I did that are AAA, top of the line, mm -hmm. $200 million from budgets that studio. from that place at home. <laughs> um, I love it. I'll watch something, The Penguin. Yeah, like I'll watch something. I'll be like, "Oh, that's I did that from my booth at home." <laughs> uh, so it's great because uh, because the tech, the the equipment is is getting it's still pricey. Like it's mm -hmm. not cheap. You know, like a, a TLM one hundred three is like a thousand bucks. So that's not inexpensive. Yeah, but it's not like ten years ago that would have cost ten grand. To yeah, that. well, it almost did cost me ten. Grand. <laughs> yeah. But that yeah, was mostly, you also had the, was mostly the, the booth. The yeah. booth uh, is not cheap. Um, again, not super expensive. Mm -hmm. And they came and built it for me. And I asked them, like, if I move, can you un take this apart and put it back together? Like, <laughs> yep, they will come in and take it apart. And LA what did you booths. have before the booth? Because I always love these closets. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just the closet that I tried. Like we bought, I bought foam mm -hmm. and I like put it all around the closet. And it yeah. just didn't work. It just sounded like a box. Yeah, you know. And uh, I remember. It was interesting, actually, because during COVID, when it first started and everybody was panicking, 
I was in the middle of a game called Phoenix Rises, Immortals Phoenix Rising, which mm-hmm. is a Ubisoft game. Uh, we had I had done a bunch of performance capture for it, and then we were going to do this all this voiceover for it. And all I had was that little closet, mm-hmm. and I think I had a sure. And mm-hmm. I, I and um, they were like, I, "It doesn't. I can't make this sound good." So to, to Ubisoft's credit, is I recorded the whole game. They paid me mm-hmm. to record the whole game. And then they sent me a TLM 103. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember how I got to... Oh, I, I, I moved into this place with a, with, a, with a really good closet and booth. Mm-hmm. And I turned that into a... And then they sent me a TLM 103 and I used that. And then I re-recorded the whole game and they paid me again, <laughs> which is amazing. Like, like saved my life during COVID. Yeah. Video games is such a huge industry. Yeah. And people kind of like forget that that's uh, like you need characters to populate all of these things, which is a whole industry of voice, Yeah. Uh, which is why I was so intrigued to have you on because this is y- – you can speak to the expertise of this, but also like how how do you funnel into this thing where – and it's not that like you're also on Star Trek Discovery, which I'm sure that since since I spoke to you last is new – and yeah. that's probably been a, a big, you know, change for you. Um, Only because of uh, because of COVID and the strike. Mm-hmm. Well, the strike was a little after, but because of COVID, I'd like, here's what happened. COVID hit and all of us who do both acting on camera and voice acting all made sure we were doing the voice acting. Yeah. So I actually bought like a little booth mm-hmm. and built it in my house and made sure that I had perfect working equipment and made sure it was top of the line spent a pretty penny but i knew it's that or i'm not working yeah because there's nobody working was that was that was that a push or a pull did you were were your agents saying like hey you need to say that was me you got ahead of it i think a lot of voice actors especially in la Mm -hmm. um we were just like okay if we don't have easy access nobody's going in anymore yeah for this stuff obviously because everything shut down nobody's doing on camera Mm -hmm. i would have on camera friends who were going back to (laughs) i mean not bartending because everything was closed but (laughs) whatever just day job that they used to have yeah because they were just nothing was going on and fortunately for me and for a lot of voice actors we were like okay let's spend some money Mm -hmm. not a ton Mm -hmm. um get the right equipment the right sound studio to make sure it sounds professional and let's we can we can still work yeah and then for a little while there was a we were really busy because there was only like a handful of us yeah who had all that equipment yeah and then eventually it uh you know a lot of a lot of voice actors were like okay i'm gonna just buy the stuff get get in there make sure we have and now being a director i was a d- voice director throughout uh covid too and the differences in people's home booths yeah, yeah. and it's like oh this mic's not great we got to figure out how to work with this or sometimes we'd send them a mic yeah and things like that all that kind of stuff uh was crazy during covid but the tvs to long-windedly answer your question the uh the tv stuff kind of went away for a while mm-hmm. even though that was mostly what i had done mm-hmm. and um it's very simple the tv stuff I've, i worked more on but the video game stuff was more popular yeah so the video game stuff is how I got like a little bit of a cult following, yeah. so to speak. Uh, and the TV stuff, less so. Yeah. If I hadn't done video games, I wouldn't have the following that I have. Yeah. Um, the call, I would call it a cult following that I have uh, with just TV because the video games are so like they have their rabid fan base for whatever series I'm doing. So when you go to a Comic-Con, because I know you do those, because sure. I mean, your your characters by nature like sci-fi the expanse yeah star trek and video games like there's a lot of over that venn diagram is almost a perfect yeah. circle again what, not intentional yeah just like whatever came my way and what happened what i happened to book that's most actors yeah a lot of actors get asked that question right it's like well why do you choose science? Yes. i didn't choose nothing i just yeah. whatever they offered me i took yeah uh, that's less so now as i grow older in my career uh, you know i i'm comfortable turning things down if mm-hmm. i don't like them but uh but at first, man, you're just taking everything. Yeah. So it just happened to be, especially I grew up in Canada um, and in Toronto and Vancouver, where I where I spent most of my time in the business, it's all sci-fi. Yeah. It's all sci-fi and fantasy. That's all they do is shoot that stuff up there. Uh-huh. And then video games are mostly sci-fi and fantasy. Yeah. Or action. So uh, it just happened to be that Venn diagram that you say just happened yeah. to be all the things that I, that I booked. And the funny thing about it is that because I speak the way I speak, everybody hires me 
for this voice. Mm -hmm. And my, you know, my demo reel has like all these kooky, crazy, nobody ever hires me for any of those. <laughs> all they do is like, oh, just get Elias to be the yeah. raspy guy. We're looking for an Elias to fix this type. Yeah. So do I've you think you can do that? that? I've actually seen that in an audition. <laughs> It's like, why am I getting this audition? They're looking for a me type. Yeah. Like, just call me. Yeah, isn't that offer I only know. at that point? I but, know, it's yeah. so silly, real weird business. <laughs> has there been, has it sustained with the home studio? Because, like, I remember that. That was when I was with um, an agency, WME, that <laughs> dropped everybody. Yeah, in the voiceover. In voiceover yeah. scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, that was like a wild west time where there was like 200 people that overnight lost their agent. Really? Yeah. With no, and so like all the other agencies then were like, no, 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 we're not taking like we, we so that was chaos. But I remember pro right prior to that, there was like, Hey, uh, everybody needs source connect now. Everybody needs, you know, here's your, no, okay, no, this is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to hear about like, you know, what that's like and has this sustained? Is it now still a huge emphasis on home studio? capability yes is. well so yes and no mm -hmm. every audition that i get uh, always says the same thing if you're gonna if you you can record from home if you want mm -hmm. but please send us your specs and send us an example mm -hmm. because like i said as a voice director i've had sessions where i'm like well we have to cancel the session because their neighbor is taking a shower <laughs> yeah. it's like it's a really long shower they're not stopping but i'm hearing so we, we might be able that. to work that into the script but yeah, like we'd like to yeah. 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 or always like everybody's sound booth even mine which is a professional like i use la vocal booths They're yeah great company great company yeah. even though it's a super professional not super expensive but mm -hmm. pricey even that if like if an ambulance goes by you're gonna hear it yeah. not like in a studio yeah. Uh, so there's always been times where it's like, okay, we'll just wait for that garbage truck. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just wait for that dog to stop barking. Yeah. So I think now that things have opened up again, I think more studios are going, please come in mm -hmm. if you can. Mm -hmm. Also, the other thing is when it's a big game, like you say, and there's 200 characters, um, they, I think engineers prefer if it's the same microphone yeah. or the same type at least. Yeah. And actors have like a varying range sure. of microphones. You know, you you capture you you pick the microphone that suits your voice best. Yeah. Or the the voice you get cast as most. Uh, like for me, it's the Neumann TLM one hundred and three. Like that's what I use, and it captures like the base of my voice really mm -hmm. well. Um, and I usually recommend that to mm -hmm. most to most actors, especially male actors who are trying to like get a bassy voice. Yeah. Um, and that's that's what I use. But I've had games where it's like, no, we're not using. We're using a shotgun mic. Mm -hmm. So could you please come into the four sixteen or four fourteen? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And then I got to drive to friggin' Marina Del Rey to do a, <laughs> uh, But you know that's what it was before. Yeah, before COVID. So, do you use your home studio setup in the Whisper Room? Like, are you prioritizing like the best quality of your auditions for voiceover? Or yeah, for, for voiceover. For voiceover, I'll try to give it the best quality. Like, yeah. I'll give you a perfect example of of what it is. So there's a a fan in my sound booth that you mm -hmm. can flick on. If I'm working for real, mm -hmm. that fan is off, yep. everything's closed, I turn off the heater or the air conditioner in my house, yep. everything's just done. If I'm doing an audition, I don't care if the fan's on. Okay. You can barely hear it. Yeah. You know, But on a professional job, you don't want to even barely hear it. Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing real work, obviously everything's shut down. But if I'm doing auditions, it's like as long as it sounds good, yeah. and it usually does sound good, it, yeah. it'll, it'll be fine. Like You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Yeah. And as somebody who casts video games and... and and animated series and stuff. I'm like, I don't care mm -hmm. if I hear you and you're good, but I hear a little hiss in the background. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna not hire you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, yeah. if 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 that loses you the job, you don't want to work with that person anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of As a VO director, actually, it's it's because not only do you do this stuff, you know, they always say like people that can't do coach or you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. or or cast. Yeah. You know, no, nothing against casting directors. You're great. Um, hire me. Uh, <laughs> Hire us. Hire us. <laughs> Together. Yeah. You have like two days in the next calendar year that you're not working. So we <laughs> sure. need to, yeah. Um, and today we need to fill those. <laughs> and today was one of them. So uh, what are you looking for? Because it's, I'm always, I think I brought this up when we did a voiceover roundtable one time. But um, in terms of specs, sometimes it'll say like, we, we're looking for somebody who's like Christopher Walken meets Leslie Jones. Yeah. And you're like, you're like, what? There's so many ways to go with that. Yeah. It, I don't, I mean, it's it's impossible to tell. It depends, right? It depends mm -hmm. on what the game is or what, mm -hmm. the, what the animated series is, what the project is. Some of these guys, they don't know what they want. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, maybe he should sound like Christopher Walken meets Leslie Jones. You're like, what even is that? Yeah. <laughs> and then you'll listen to 
500 auditions and you'll whittle that down yeah you whittle those down yeah and then you get to a few and you go all right which one sounds like christopher walking me some <laughs> and then you sometimes it's like you know what none of them but this one is very interesting read or very interesting quality in their voice and let, let's try that one mm -hmm. you know it's, it's nothing that's why i always i think actors in general for on camera and for voiceover they put too much thought into their auditions mm -hmm. way too much thought because you don't need to because even the casting directors don't really know what they want and mm -hmm. the producers don't really know what they want and if they do it'll it'll get whittled down and you won't get it anyway yeah you know um there of course you you lose you know i'll lose a role and then i'll see the person who got the role and i'll be like, well why didn't they tell me to do that i could yeah. have done that yeah that happens of course but just do you man just do whatever you think is is right for the role and then you'll either book it or you won't then you move on to the next one yeah has there been a role that changed to, like where you felt like the sea change of like okay this is because like for instance the video game thing where like everything started kind of you know not funneling to that but like that became a big yeah um a, a big source of jobs income whatever you want to say it was when i i, I went back to montreal for a little while because that's where i grew up mm -hmm. and um uh, my wife wanted to see the city so we moved there for a couple years who's also a fabulous voice artist yeah she's and she's singer in, yeah she's yeah. in a bunch of stuff too michelle bobeck yep and she um she and i moved back to montreal for a little bit and ubisoft is in montreal mm -hmm. and ados montreal both great companies and uh that's where i booked uh, adam jensen from deus ex mm -hmm. And I was also at the time doing like Rainbow Six for Ubisoft and Splinter Cell for Ubisoft. Um, and that that changed stuff. Mm -hmm. Like that changed stuff in terms of once Adam Jensen came, got out into like the zeitgeist and mm -hmm. it became kind of popular, yeah. that character, mm -hmm. then I, I started running with it. Like on Twitter, I'm like, okay, this character's popular, so yeah. let me join Twitter. And that's when I joined Twitter. And mm -hmm. then I started being like, oh, let me do Comic-Cons and let me do yeah. or try to get those. That's that kind of bumped me up into a, a, a different level. And then you kind of, I just ran with it and over like exaggerated how popular this guy was. Mm -hmm. So more and more people would pay attention to me. And then what ended up happening is you would get to a, um, you would get to a, a, a an audition and then they knew, it's like, oh, you're the guy who played this character. I love mm -hmm. that game. And then that, you know, cause the gaming community, it's not really that big, right? Yeah. Like I, the devs from Ubisoft, they all were, they all worked at some other company yeah. first and then they went to another company and, the, like I played the penguin in Gotham Knights. Uh -huh. That was just offered to me. <laughs> and it was offered to me because all of the devs were on Deus Ex. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, I think Elias could play the penguin. I'm like, okay. Uh -huh. And then as an actor who does, I'm like, yeah, yeah, totally. And then I hung up. I'm like, I have no idea what I'm going to do. What's the penguin's motivation? Yeah. You know, what like, well, how am I going to, what is his voice? What does he mean by doing? I, like, I didn't even know. And they're like, yeah, great. You're going to be the penguin. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> But that just shows you it's just trust because you've worked with them before. Yeah. Um, and that character became so popular, that Jensen character. So mm -hmm. that was the one that kind of bumped me up in the video game world. Mm -hmm. And on camera, I don't know that there has been one. I mean, I've done a lot of cool sci-fi shows, mm -hmm. but there's nothing that, like, put me to this, not, like, upper echelon. I'm still auditioning for stuff, and I, yeah. still, have to, I still have to, like, convince people to hire me. It's yeah. Like, Star Trek was an offer. They did offer it, um, more or less. It was a little bit. It was a... Casting directors both called me directly and said, we want to use you in this. Mm -hmm. um, and they were like, let, let us get back to you. We want to tell the producers. And then the producers said, we love him, but can you can you just put it on tape mm -hmm. also? So it wasn't like an audition process. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like a half offer. It was yeah. an offer and then I put it on tape and then, yeah. then gave, got the role. That's like a, is that a screen test. Would that be how you define like a that? Test, yeah, it's yeah. Just like, yeah. Uh, but it was that was more um, reputation within the business as mm -hmm. opposed to like that bumped me to another echelon. Like, they mm -hmm. didn't care about my popularity. They yeah. just knew who I was because I had auditioned for them or worked for them a, a bunch of times. Which goes back to the importance of being in casting rooms. Like you just right? you get the, that person who's casting this. You might not get it three years down the line. Dude, they're like every that, role I've gotten, every yeah. big role I've gotten has all been by losing another role. Yeah. Every one of them. Mm -hmm. The Expanse, they wrote that character for me mm -hmm. because I had auditioned for one of the leads. Yeah. And I got, like, it was down to me and him, and then yep. he got it justifiably in this case. Most of the time it's not. Most of the time I'm like, it's terrible. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but in this case, in Wes's case, in uh, in um, as Amos in Expanse, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, 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 I would have cast him too. Um, but then I came so close, and then they they actually auditioned me for another part, came close, didn't get it. And then they wrote me six episodes mm -hmm. on the show, totally because I 
did well in those auditions, mm-hmm. right? And same thing with Star Trek to a degree. I was on Discovery in the first season. I had like three lines. Uh-huh. There's a whole story behind that. I was <laughs> mad about it. But uh, I, when I finished that episode, I was like, look, I, I know I burned myself on the show, but I went to the casting directors, whom I knew by going in and talking to them and yep. meeting them on a hundred of uh, other auditions. And I went and talked to them and I was like, look, if there's ever anything else I can play on this, let mm-hmm. me know. They called me and offered me a role five years later. Wow. So it just goes to show you, yeah. That, like, yeah, go oh. in and do your best. And then if you're good, if you're good, they'll know you're good. Yeah. And then they'll lit casting directors will legitimately try to find good actors work. Yeah. Like legitimately. Then I'm just going to say it. And this all to me is the lure of Hollywood and yeah. why you could be, you know, it's year 10 of just nothing's happening. Yeah. But year 11, that thing I did in year two yeah, might lead to something. Well yeah. <laughs> Which could bring us to AI if you want. I would love to get into AI. So here's my. This is you have yeah. uh, just for people that are now learning about Elias. I follow you on Twitter, and everything you say on AI, I'm like, yes, like yeah. it's like a town hall meeting. I'm like, yeah, go. <laughs> uh, this, especially with the new SAG contract, and you know, we don't have to like bad mouth because I know a lot of people worked very hard on getting yeah. where we are at least right now. But I do feel like there are still. Um, gaping holes in you know allowing ai to infiltrate and yeah uh, it, there's not much they can do about it that's the thing like their heart is in the right place all mm-hmm. the sag negotiators and stuff like that and, and um it, it's like manufacturing yeah you know it's just like it's easier of us for make have robots make cars than it is for people mm-hmm. it's just the way it, the, the world is going right so it's not so much ai that like you I, it's, it's not that i hate ai or anything mm-hmm. like that the I just hate the reality of it. Like mm-hmm. I know what's coming, mm-hmm. and the reason I said we can tr- you can go from voiceover actors starting out and AI is every voiceover actor started out for the most part doing you know background voices in Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. You know the guys who yell grenade, and yeah. get down, mm-hmm. all those guys you hear. Um, games like that, it's going to get to the point. I don't. It's probably here in some cases, but it's going to get to the point where. They're like, why are we bringing in an actor, paying him full SAG Mm -hmm. day, paying a studio, paying an engineer? Yep. When we can run it through a computer, nobody cares about the voices in the background. Right. So that's all well and good for that company, but for the actor who's trying to break in. Yep. All the loop groups, all the- All those uh, loop groups, all the dubbing. Dubbing. I have friends who make a living off of dubbing. Mm -hmm. It's all going to That was me. I used to do ADR impersonations. It's going to go away. Yep. Because the, why do they need you? Why yeah. do they need an impersonator? They'll yeah. just have run it through a computer and... Grab that person's voice. Yep. Fine. There you go. And the thing that makes me nervous about it is that... And not makes... I mean, it, it all makes me nervous even though I'm with you. Like, I yeah. get it. But, um, like, with acting and, you know, unless you're doing a movie like The Polar Express or something where you have Tom Hanks's character in an animation yeah. or... You know, we're only a few years removed from what was it, the Scorpion King, The Rock, like how <laughs> right. you know, that CGI yeah, was, moment. Like cool. we're still not there yet of realistic, like um, human replacement. We will be close. Yeah. With voice, it's different, and it's already there. It's already there. Yeah. I hear there's this account that like he he posted to like Instagram and TikTok. Um, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers singing a grocery list to the tune of Don't Stop. Yeah. And it's Anthony Kiedis. Yeah. I mean, it is. And so we're there. And like. So it brings in what it does for me with AI is it brings in, it makes it a moral quandary for mm-hmm. me. If you're in the business of entertainment and mm-hmm. art, let's, let's take entertainment out of it. If you're in the business of art, mm-hmm. you have to end up making a moral, literally a moral decision. Mm-hmm. And you have to say, all right, this is art. Art comes from human beings. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come from a computer. The computer is just ripping off other human beings. Yeah. Right? But I feel like eventually there will be a somewhat of a rebellion to that. Mm -hmm. And people will go, you know, like when you buy food and it goes, with real fruit. Yeah. You know, like that kind of thing. It's going to get to the point where it's like, well, I want real actors. Yep. And I was thinking about this. (laughs) That's a great point. I was thinking about this watching. Now um, with real humans. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We're not that. I mean, that's probably going to happen. Uh-huh. But I was watching the Super Bowl and the commercials, and every commercial was a celebrity. Did you notice that? Mm-hmm. Like every commercial. Yep. Every commercial was like five celebrities all mm-hmm. mixed together. <laughs> and you're looking at it going, and I the, the, the place it took me wasn't, uh, oh, look at all these people. It was, 
people want to see people mm -hmm. that they know. Mm -hmm. They want to build trust in these celebrities. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like much like, you know, 3D TVs or even NFTs and things mm -hmm. like that, there's going to be a big rush of it. Mm -hmm. People are going to go, this technology is amazing. Yeah. And then they're going to go, but it's not real. Yeah. And it's not art. What is going to interrupt it? Like, in my opinion, I think it's going to, there's going to be, like in music, there was a big lawsuit because somebody put out a Drake album. Yeah. I think hopefully the courts or some kind of, it's copyright the only way to do it yeah that's why I, I don't get on sag too hard because there's not much they can do really. yeah uh they could say like no no never use ai and kind yeah and go, well, i use ai all sorts of ways yeah you know, like video game video games uh that sag is talking about striking and i don't personally think it's a good idea because there are a million ways to use ai so you mm -hmm. can go ban ai altogether mm -hmm. that's not really what they're asking but like there's all these different things that that uh, artificial intelligence is doing in in the game world in particular because mm -hmm. it's such a tech based world mm -hmm. that you can't just outright say well don't use AI mm -hmm. but then at the other side you're like well please don't replace us because mm -hmm. uh, the actors are important um, for the most part uh, as a sidebar for the most part video game companies that I've worked with they're all like we're not going to use AI don't mm -hmm. worry we're not I think they might for like the background stuff mm -hmm. but for the main actors they're gonna I think always stick with actors for a little while at least because there's going to be a backlash like mm -hmm. I said. Tell me why, like what, and and now I'm like devil's advocating. Yeah, what is what are you missing with an AI performance? What's the what do you what do you Elias defect? Connection. Is? Yeah, it's really connection. The people like the characters I play because I play them with empathy and mm -hmm. and I play them with a specific way to connect mm -hmm. to the audience. That's what good actors do, mm -hmm. um, and good characters. Like, there's no way The Last of Us, if The Last of Us three decided we're just going to use AI guys. Mm -hmm. There's no way that would go over. Yeah. People would be like, no, I loved Ellie. I loved yeah. her performance. Yeah. I love Troy Baker's performance. No, he's gone now, but <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. I, I love Troy Baker's performance as Joel. Yeah. It's not Joel doesn't really exist. And yeah. people know that inherently. They know that this actor is bringing this character mm -hmm. to life and you connect with the actor and the character, even if it's digital. Yeah. You still connect with the performance, the vocal performance. And the. I, I would be worried that maybe you can get away, especially as it goes with vocal performances being replaced completely, mm -hmm. if they don't know. Mm -hmm. And if they don't know, well, they'll, then they'll say, well, what's the difference then if yeah. I don't know? But I think if they did know, they'd be like, oh, this is fake. Yeah. It's, just, it's fake. Yeah. And it's also stealing. Yeah. And it's theft to me all the way down the signal chain, like your performance, the way you would say things. So that's your IP yeah. being stolen. The microphone, the compressor, the preamp, Everything, the studio set, the, the room sound, that all is being sampled, if you will, yeah. to come from a music, music perspective and replicated based on this, all of this stuff that was created by humans. Yeah. So... I'm hoping that it's the IP world, IP theft, that then is the thing that, like, it not stops AI, because yeah. I agree with you. I think there are many great applications of it, but at least start steering the cruise ship back to be like, hey, let's control this, you yeah. know, because right now there's no sensibility for how do we do this responsibly. Because it's new, right? It's yeah. relatively new. As, at least in the public eye, it's new. Mm -hmm. Well, Starfield, Star Trek, Discovery... I mean, I could go through. I could go through your. Uh, just in case you're not aware of your resume, <laughs> uh, the Expanse, obviously, Blood of Zeus, uh, Deus Ex, everything. I mean, every, call all the all bunch of Call of Duties, a bunch of Assassin's Creeds, mm -hmm. Last of Us Part Two. I mean, you've done at Fortnite. You've done so many freaking things, and I can't wait to see you do so many freaking more. So, so. <laughs> thanks so much for coming in and talking thanks, to man. us. Yeah. Really appreciate you, Elias. All right, bye. <laughs>